Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcomed back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by absolutely nobody. I'm on my own, so there may be a brief period of silence while I wait for a few guests to arrive. Hopefully I've not got an issue with my link. We shall see. I'll do some shout outs to the chat, I think. Hey, Mung Patrol, good to see you. CGI Ranty, good to have you here. Infinite Loops, hello, hello. John Watson, probably the most regular of regulars. Good to have you here. Jonathan Doherty, nice to see you. Vinegar Strokes, nice to see you as well. Slick James, hello, hello. Missing your comments recently, Slick James Johnson. What's happened? James Spencer, good to see you. Joe Kovacs says hi. Hello to you too. Hero, Eddie Dinosaur. <laughs> nice to have you. Flat out faith. What's up, what's up? Big, somebody trying to tell me my link isn't working properly. Let's find out. Hello? Yo! Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Nathan. Yes, can you hear me? The link The link you've given us, me, Travis and Jim are in the link, but you're not in the same hangout as, as us. Oh, really? Okay, well I'll have to share the... Uh... <laughs> That's weird. I thought there was some big awry. Sort that out. Use error on my part, it seems. Hello? Yo. I've just sent you the link to the hangout that I'm in now. Great start to the show. Nathan, the link you've given us, me, Travis, and Jim are in the same hangout for the link you've given us. Yeah, I've just But sent you're not you in that one. hangout, so something's gone wrong with the link somewhere. I've just sent you another one. Oh. Well, my apologies for the technical issues. Not normally off to this much of a sketchy start. Hello, that vegan goy. How you doing? How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, Travis is in the uh, in the other uh, room here. I don't know the why there's top. a second room. <laughs> that makes no sense. There we go. I've shared this link that is literally taken straight off the. Uh... There we go. People are joining. I think that's it. Yeah. That's a rookie mistake. 
I didn't do anything wrong. Just did exactly what I'd normally do. I don't understand why this split hangout makes no sense. But there we go. It's all sorted now. By the looks. Right, let's try that again. We are joined by Flat Earth Vegan Goy, Sleeping Warrior, and Travis. Good to have you all. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. Sleeping Warrior? Yeah, hello? You're, you're very muted, uh, Sleeping. Oh, hang on, it might. I've had some sketchy starts to shows, but this is about as rough edged as it gets, really, isn't it? <laughs> super slick, super professional. Keeping it real. We'll wait for Anthony to come back and then we'll we'll rattle on with housekeeping like nothing's happened. What do you mean? What's happened? Like it wasn't a really rough start with nobody here. <laughs> and oh, I, I, you missed it. You missed it. Right. Hello, I was Anthony. You a chance to. No, nothing from Anthony. Nothing but technical issues. These shows happen. There'll be another one tomorrow. It'll be a lot more slick. Nope, nothing from Anthony. See, it's you're, not just you're, me. You sound like you're in a different room, Anthony. I can't hear him at all. I am very bunged up, though. Do we just get on with housekeeping without Anthony? Otherwise, we'll be sat in endless protracted silences. Sounds good to me. Any signs of curvature, gentlemen? No. Nope. Oh, flick vegan goys off. Perfect timing, vegan. Thank you so much for the support. Oh, I'm, I'm here. Be I'm right here. back. Am I off the show? The only curvature that, that, that I can see is on vegan goys uh, icon. There you go. Uh, you can't hear me? Yeah, we hear no, you. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> Very interesting. No, I, I have no evidence of any curvature. No. Perfect. Any signs of axial rotation? Nope. Not today. Any evidence that you can have a gas pressure without a container? Still waiting for it. Yeah, I'm really uh, keeping my eye out. Hey, Owen. Hello. Hello. Any scientific evidence of gravity? No. No. No, no big G or little G. Nope. What about a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the center of a presupposed spherical Earth? <laughs> That's a joke, right? <laughs> well, when I was six years old, me and the kid Maybe. across the street, we tried to dig a hole, but we couldn't find anything like that. And I'm sure it's still not there today, but we'll keep looking. I don't hold out too much hope. What about the presupposition itself? What about the R value radius, gentlemen? None. Well, the R value exists, but how related it is to the actual shape of the Earth? That's the question. Yeah, can they prove Earth radius? No? Nah. Nobody? No? No. Unless I missed anything, I'm pretty sure that's it. I think that covers the housekeeping. Welcome back, Anthony. Can we hear you? No, no. you're still uh Hello. you're still in, in the other room. Yeah, no sound. Hmm. No sound. You know, that's funny because I, I did a hangout last night and it was the same thing. It was ridiculous. Some people why well, a few snipers they came on. Not luckily we couldn't hear them either, but people were coming on and you just couldn't hear them. So maybe the the Google folks have decided to help us out in the flat earth community by screwing up our audio. Maybe. It's probably just a hangout glitch. It started off pretty terribly with, uh, as I say, nobody getting the link I sent them. Or I, I joined the exact same link, you know. <laughs> it was just, just bizarre. So for me to join it and everyone else to be joining a different room is just weird. All right, Nathan, can you hear me? Chris. Chris Berry says, Nathan Oakley, did you know Eddie Bravo gave you a shout out on Twitter? Yes, a couple of days ago. It was on Instagram, as far as I was aware, unless he's also shouted me out on Twitter as well. Maybe there's another shout out from Eddie Bravo. But my my knowledge was that it was on Instagram. I don't use Instagram, so I think um, Anthony Riley and Easton Maholsky both sent me the screenshots of his uh, 
sharing the show. So, Anthony, Anthony's trying to get your attention, uh, Nathan. I can hear you, Anthony, but you're still very low. What the I heck? can't hear you at all. It's a delight. <laughs> it's a delight, Arwen. Change the mic and oh, settings, Anthony. They haven't changed. Oh, I can just about hear you. Yeah, you I can almost Yeti? hear It's very low. Very quiet. Fuck. I've just done a restart as well. I don't know. There you go. Well, were you just there not talking into your mic? Boo. Now Boo. we can Back. hear you. Back in the box. That was good there. <laughs> Hang on. Let me just try this. No, you hear you now. You're fine. Yeah, you're fine now. Fine now. Really? Yeah, don't yeah. fiddle yeah. with anything. Yeah. yeah, you're good. It's something to do with Nathan then, surely. No, don't blame me for your crappy computer. Well, I haven't changed anything. I'm sat there, one, I'm watching my levels bouncing up and down, and I'm thinking, why can't they even hear me? What the hell's going on? It's I because Google switched off the daylight savings time a few hours ago, and they're all screwed up down there. I'm blaming <laughs> Nathan. You can blame me all you like. No, it's gravity. No, it's not gravity, Alvin. That's not what gravity is. <laughs> you don't know it. <laughs> I don't know what it never, is. So is, is the benefit is the benefit uh, that I missed housekeeping? One of those... Yeah, yeah, we skipped over you. Yeah. We missed housekeeping. No, do you know what a shame that was? Yeah. <laughs> so where were we then? Quite a lot's happened in my one day of absence. Right. There's um quite a few topics to cover, isn't there? Um there's the moon, there's some fake subscribers, there's what else is there? Ah, we might not be able to do the fake subscribers one. I haven't looked at that. I know I said I would do, but I've just forgotten about it. As quick as I said I'd do it. <laughs> I've quit as equally as quick forgotten to do it. Fair enough. Well, maybe tomorrow. But, um, or yeah, there's quite a few minutes. things. I mean, yesterday me and Ranty had the pleasure of a drive down to London, right? Oh, my God. Four-hour drive. It should be three hours, right? It ended up being four. I was on the way home. I was able to get from London. Like, bear in mind, London's like, well, Birmingham is halfway to London for me. Right. So I got up to Birmingham in one hour for the rest of the half journey that it takes to get from Birmingham to my house. It took three. And it's because they're up the so-called upgrading this smart motorway. And um, it's going to take two to three years to do it. And basically all it is, is to put a shitload of speed cameras in. And if they catch you doing 73 mile an hour, you get a ticket. Um, but they call it a smart motorway. But people haven't realized that what it actually is, is just basically a fine or a tax motorway. Stop growling. Thank you. So I did the first half journey, half of the, the journey in one hour. Um, the, the second half journey in three. Horrendous. So I won't ever be doing a one-day trip down to London again. I either have to spend the night somewhere or... Because it's just too much. Eight hours of driving in a, in shitty traffic is just not worth doing. But it was a really good day, a really good really good trip because um, obviously when we get to there, me and Ranty had to go and find where we were going and catch up with everybody. So there was the likes of Adam Meek in there, met Roxanne. I met the guys on the, um, the the Flat Earth tour that they did. It's probably got a name. I don't know what it is. I only joined the conversation quite late on. But it was really good. Um, just apart from the travelling down there, it was so crap. <laughs> anyway, that's my rant over with. Oh, you didn't mention your, your opening. That was class. I'm going to do it for you. So Anthony's <laughs> brought on stage, so to speak, um unexpectedly so he says look i don't want to cut into anybody's time i'll keep this very to very relatively brief um ah. but uh <laughs> contain yourself Harwin. come on so he says i don't like being a flat earther you get subject to scorn and ridicule and horrible comments and that's just from the other flat earthers <laughs> yeah which is true i mean everybody hates somebody in flat earth right and i get a first my first year of um Flat Earth hate from within Flat Earth. Um, and that's cool. It's not really cool, but it's the way it goes. And uh, I says to Adam Meek, and I says, how much shit do you get? And he says, I don't get anything, mate. And I was like, what do you mean you don't get anything? He says, nah, I don't get any shit. And I was like, so it must just be me and Roxanne then. And Ranty pipes up, the, up in the background. He says, no, I get it too. And I was like, well, hang on a minute. We need to give a shout out for Adam Meekin because he doesn't get anywhere near as much hate as he deserves. <laughs> so shout out to Adam Meekin not getting any hate from within you Flat bastard. Earth. You bastard. You've just ruined his... Uh... <laughs> Boy, <sighs> it, it was good though it was a it was a long journey there and back i didn't get back till just after half past 11 and um it was just i'm just never doing a london in one london and back in a day again it's just not not, not worth it it's too much 
So that's that was that was the first point. Uh, what else do we notice? Um, we noticed that there's um, a moon issue going on right now. So we need to put out an all points bulletin, right? Travis has mentioned this, and I, I realise that Travis is is hot on this at the minute. And I've been waiting for this for a long time. I've been punting this for ages, and um, no one's really picked up on it. And it's massive. Um, the moon phase that we're going into now is the new moon phase. And at new moon phase, of course, it's the part where the moon and the sun catch up in our day sky. You look out the window and you can watch the, the sun and the moon catch them up. And we, we can all do this, right? Everywhere in the world, all of us can do this. But for three to four days, nobody sees the, the moon at all, right? We can see the sun, but we can't see the moon. Now, there's a real problem there because on the heliocentric model, of course, we should see the moon. Now, even if you say, well, the atmosphere basically bleaches out the earth shine fair enough but where's the crescent that should be there by virtue of the fact that it's passing in between us and the sun okay it's not in a perfect line it's not going to give us this uh, eclipse like shadow thing penumbra and umbra, umbra penumbra thing but what it is doing is passing within five degrees of the sun and the sun's size is about half a degree so if you double the sun's size that's one degree and then the moon is like at worst five degrees away from it but if it's the further away it is, the more of a crescent that we should get because the angle should be there because we are seeing ninety percent of the sun, ninety percent of the moon. But the moon goes missing for everybody. So if you're a ball earth believer, you're gonna have to ask yourself over the next three to four days, where is the moon? Because on your model, the moon cannot be like it cannot be invisible. It, it should be there, and nobody on earth sees it. So for the next three four right, shows, so boom. Yeah, so I mean, let's let's seriously talk about this because I so I just put in four or five pictures that I took this morning. It says that they're sending right now, so you guys probably can't see it, but it's in the Hangout chat. So I mean, I, I was I was at the Chesapeake Bay this morning. There was a couple other photographers, and I was talking to them, talking to them about the moon, telling them to check it out, and and I said, you know, look at the moon right now. And they looked up. I said, it's you know like 40, 50 degrees in the sky. I said, do you realize what that means? They said, no. I said, the moon is going to be in our sky all day. We're going to have a daylight moon all day. And then I said, tomorrow or the next day when it's a new moon, we won't be able to see it, but it's going to be in the same degree. It's going to be there still. And they looked up and they're like, so why won't we be, we be able to see it? And I said, that's a good question. But, yeah, that... but let's think about that. You know, so if we think about the fact that if you change the angle, right, we ha you, have to, you have to change the angle or the location of the moon in order to diminish the light. If the sun is the source of the, light, of the moon's light, the, the moon has to be changing in its location in order for that light to go away. But tomorrow, when, we, when I look up and I, and I get the Skyview app out and it tells me it's in the same spot that it was or at least close, right? It's not going to be that, that uh, drastic of a degree change. Yeah, to the mind of God for the super chat. Thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate it. So. Yeah, so let, let's dwell on that a little bit. I'm just looking for um, a picture now so I can put some on screen. All right, um, so I... All of my pictures, it looks, it says that they were sent. So if you go to the Hangout chat, I've got uh, four pictures for, for you guys. That was taken this morning at 5.30. All right, I'm having a look. Yeah, are these the ones that you put on uh, Facebook? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking to Nathan about these are taken at, hang on, let me just get into it. So I'm talking about the same pictures. Um, they're taken at um, nighttime, is that right? This morning, 5.30, 5.40. Uh... Let's have a look. Let's get these pictures because we need to show these, Nathan. I'm, I'm missing. Where are they in the chat? I don't see them. They're in the they're in the Google chat in the Hangouts. So if you go to hangouts.google.com, you'll see them in there. If you're not familiar, okay. you'll have to just open up the top list, the top thing. Okay. Nathan, are you able to display these, or would you rather me display them? It's much easier if you do it. All right. So let's work out how I'm going to do this. All right. I'll have to open up with them in in separate windows. That'll work third one and then fourth one and then fifth one right so okay so let me screen share now if, oh and if you just keep your eye on the back door all right so 
These are the pictures that Travis has just sent to me, Nathan. Are we on? Yeah, I can see it. There you are. So what we're getting towards now is the, the sun would be immediately, like, obviously it's off at towards 7 o'clock in, in the thing. This is the angle first thing in the morning. Um, but what what we're seeing is this crescent, right? Now, all right, we can accept that you may not see the dark, the dark side of the shadow of the um, the moon because it's not receiving any light. Um, I'm sure Soundly would be able to p pick out Earth. Yeah, but I sent you a picture where you got it. Sure. Well, the point is the crescent is what we're focusing on because okay. that crescent is supposed to always be there. Now, bear in mind that the ecliptic path of the, the moon is like five degrees. Well, if the moon itself is about half a degree, then it's going to move up to five degrees away depend, um, from where it's positioned in the sky based on um, the, the orbital path of the ecliptic plane that it's said to be on. The problem with that is that it means that this crescent should always be visible throughout the new moon phase, and it doesn't do it. What happens is this crescent fades with um, the rest of the moon. So let's, there's a picture of, yeah, okay, so let's see if, there we go. So you can see that the moon's physically there in the picture now. But did, uh, Travis, you, you showed some on Facebook um, yesterday. I saw a link of yours um, of the moon during the day. And yeah, you're you showing it was fading out. Have you got? Can you put them pictures in? Yeah, give me a second. So what what we're saying is um, this crescent part, when it becomes daytime, the crescent's still got to be there, right? Now it can't go missing because there is light that we're going to see caused by the fact that it's not we're not sat directly behind it. The only time that it, that it can be the case that we don't get a crescent is when it's not perfectly um, when it's when it's perfectly lined up. Um, but that's not really what's happening. We're seeing that this is on an angle, right? So the sun's obviously down here somewhere. It's probably over here somewhere. But anyway, regardless of the, the, the issue. Um, and now hopefully Travis is going to send these pictures. Yes, this is what I was hoping to show. These are the better ones, right? So if I open up these. Uh, All right. Now, if you, okay. Well, hang on. Give me a sec. Let me get them back open. Because these are excellent photos to make the point. So we've got that one. No. So they must have done the first. So it was... hey, right, so by daytime, look at how this is. All of it is fading out. So we're losing okay. the whole of the moon. So the crescent part of it, obviously this is an older picture. But can you see now, that the right... crescent is, is going yeah, with okay. the moon? Yeah. And it moves from like over here in California right now. It's on the bottom. so it's And then it goes to the side. That's always kind of confusing to me. Well, this crescent part is is supposed to be always visible on the model right, because right, it's not yeah. perfectly lined up with the moon and the sun. It's not in a straight line. It's on the ecliptic plane. And the further on that plane it is, the better it is for us. And we know that it's got a five-degree variation, right? So that five-degree variation is the worst it can get. That's the best for the flat earthers. Um, and the closer to the sun it is, then that's the worse it is for the flat earthers because they can argue, well, you're all looking at the backside of the, the moon, you idiot. Well, if that's the case, well, why does it all fade out to nothing? All of it. So this crescent is always supposed to be there, even on the day where, if it's, say it's on the ecliptic path and it's five degrees away, then on that ecliptic path, then it's still going to show this crescent because you're not 100% lined up. You're only 95. You've got 5% outstanding and there should be a crescent. Yep. Nobody sees it. It's just not there. So what we need to do is raise awareness to everybody, particularly if you're in Australia, particularly in America or um, on the, along the any coast of America and obviously in Europe, because that's covering like half the globe, apparently the alleged globe. Um, and nobody's going to see it yet. Yeah, you ballers will turn a blind eye to it and say, and we're all saying, well, where is it? And you guys are just going to ignore it. And I think that's complete intellectual dishonesty. If any of you ballers have got any ounce of integrity, you'll be, th you'll be saying, hmm, it's a fair point in this what's going on. And that crescent should always be there. It doesn't, yeah goes completely missing it's as if it runs out of battery power just as it gets to the final straight and it has to be recharged by the sun or perhaps it goes behind the sun which is my position um, but whatever happens it's not consistent with the heliocentric model something else is going on i don't know what and i make no claim to what but what i do realize is this is not consistent with your model at all yeah and you you would think too that if the sun is lighting the moon the light wouldn't fade out. It would still be bright. I know that you're not going to get as much of the contrast as you do uh, in the early morning hours, but nonetheless, it, it wouldn't diminish. Correct.
it wouldn't fade as if you turn turn the dimmer down in the living room, right? Yeah, which is what it does. So I mean, this is like another example where there's not just a problem with the evidence; it's missing evidence. You can't have that that moon disappearing on your model, gents. It doesn't happen. So maybe what I'll do this morning is uh, go out every hour and uh, snap a shot. Yes, because if you can show it like disappearing over the day, I mean, it, it can, is it still there now? Can you see it? I can see it in California. It's still a little dark, but it's yeah, I, I'm I'm inside right now. I mean, if I walked out, I could probably locate it. You want me to do that? I'll do it real quick. Yeah, go and have a look. All right. So while they're t while they're just toddling along and looking at their moon, the the point is to put on an all points bulletin to anybody watching this and say, look, from now, you know, get a, a general feel of where the moon is because we're going to be asking over the next three to four days for you as an audience member to participate and try and get a picture of the moon. Now, you can see it now, so you can get a gauge of where it is, what it's doing. But well, it's, it's, it's going to be very close to the sun in the sky. I know it's not actually going to be there. You're not going to see it. But where it is on their model, it physically does exist. It is lined up with the sun roughly. So, like, you get it you get it within a sun's width or a sun's diameter. That's going to be where the moon is. So, basically, look where the sun is, and then you try and place spot the moon, and you ain't going to see a moon, and you're not going to be able to see a moon. Um, so, the question becomes, well, why not? And, obviously, we ha you have to look at new moon on Wikipedia, and you'll see the Thierry Lagout um, first visual new moon, and it's the this, this thinnest slither of a crescent. But the point is that the crescent shouldn't even be... You shouldn't lose the crescent to gain it back. The crescent should always be there. So we shouldn't have this Thierry Lagout picture in the first place because it shouldn't go missing. It doesn't go invisible on the heliocentric model. That's what they tell us it does. But, of course, it clearly doesn't. So we're going to... Yeah, APB out, all points bulletin. Once that moon goes missing, right, for three to four shows, we are not going to see that moon. And anybody on the Ball Earth model not going to find it and that's a bit of a problem because it doesn't go missing on the heliocentric model boys and girls hopefully travis has gone to find it and he's going to come back with an answer so we'll wait we'll wait till they do before i change the subject oh, I, I guess it's like jesus he disappears for three days and then it'll be back i uh oh there it is there it is i got it hold on i'll snap some shots off it must be getting thinner at the present right yeah, yeah. I mean, I was looking around the sky and I could not see it. And then I had to get a contrast. I backed up into some uh, branches above me and I could then see it in the contrast. So hold on. So it's it's clearly getting to the point where it's going to disappear for the three three to four days. Um, and obviously, once it does go, no one sees it. It's like a little bit eerie because we all we're all familiar with seeing the sun and the moon in the sky. And when when you're told that that moon then goes missing for three and a half days. That's a paradigm shift because if you're an honest baller, you've got to ask yourself the question, well, where is it? And you and our, everybody knows that we shouldn't lose sight of it. It should not become invisible. Okay, at totality, if it absolutely perfectly transits the sun and we get a, a solar eclipse, sure, I can understand that then because that makes sense, right? But logic and reason tell us that on the heliocentric model, the thing does not go missing. So if you're a baller and you think that you live on a heliocentric model, which is a reification fallacy, in, 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 just to remind you all. Um, you're going to have to explain why the moon goes missing, because it doesn't go missing on your model. Right, before we move on, did uh, Vegan Goy or Travis have anything to actually present in this regard, before we change the subject? Not yeah, maybe tomorrow I'll go out and take some pictures of this thing. <laughs> I cannot get it in my viewfinder. I can see it with my eye, but I cannot see it when I open my, my yeah, viewfinder. Yeah, so we're obviously right on the cusp of it disappearing. So by the end of the show, the chances are we're not going to see it. We're probably Nobody's going to see any part of the moon, right? Because well, it'll just get to that point where it disappears. Sandra says the moon is at 11.2% waning at the moment. 11 point. Yeah, it's, it's still just before sunrise, so it's still... You can still see it in California. Ah, right. You've got less light there, so therefore you can see it. Gotcha. Yeah, but explain that while it's go while it goes missing. Like, I mean, yeah, that crescent. I mean, I I can accept the rest of the moon not being seen, but the crescent shouldn't go missing because it's still getting light from the sun. We should see it. Just want to mention. I'm, a, I'm gonna go Sorry, sorry, to, 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 to get it in before it floats off back. the screen. Sorry. So P900 call Pixandra again. 
I've caught it at 5.7%. So just to give you a gauge of what's capable, what's possible. So over the next couple of days, we want to preempt it while people can still catch it, which is now. Um, tomorrow you might catch it if you're skilled, like Sandra definitely is. You might not. But for the next three days, it will go for everybody. Thanks, Nobody Thanks will Nathan. Catch I appreciate it. that. Was that a dig? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said, yeah, Sandra can catch it, but you might not be able to. <laughs> I don't think I he thought, meant I it that I thought way. that was quite no, subtle. I know, I know, I know. I'm just Travis messing. is sharp. <laughs> so obviously, in that case, then, Sandra, you've just nominated yourself to be the uh, the chief lunar sub spotter because um, you've obviously got this uh, infrared lens. Because that's another question that needs to be asked. Um, can it be spotted with the infrared? Um, I know there probably won't be. But infrared's quite a new thing for us, so it's like, well, what can be seen with infrared? So, Sandra, if you're watching, make sure that you uh, get a bit of moon, moon, moon lunar study on the go and see what can be seen with the infrared lens on that um, P1000. Well, can backing, we detect it? Um, backing, what happens um, in that period? Can it be seen? And the answer is no. It goes behind, the, as far as I'm concerned, it goes behind the sun. It doesn't go in front of it. So she's backing what Vegan Goyce just said based, based on his observation right now the best time to catch it is sunrise and sunset and p900 saying exactly that in the chat sure but i when's the best when's the best time to catch it when it goes so-called missing because it can't go missing on the model good question you have to track it on a traveling plane can you guys hear me yeah, yeah man chocolate. good morning good morning chocolate what's up guys so, Sandra, when's the best time to catch the vanishing moon? Because these little boys and girls don't realise that it shouldn't happen on their model. It doesn't go missing on their model, it's always there, but it goes missing real world. Well, uh, P900s, it's always too close to the sun, that sleeping warrior. No, that's not true. It's, wow. It can be up to five degrees away from the sun. Fair enough. Any last points on this subject? If not, I'm going to move on to something else. No, let's, I'm all right. Let's move on. You all. Travis? I was, I was going to get my, um, my tripod. I'm going, to, I'm going to mess with it and try to capture it and even just carry on. Don't Happy mind dokey. me. Yeah, I have a little story to tell. Uh, okay, uh, go I, ahead. It's, it'll be short. Before I came on this show, I was uh, at a place, and uh, yeah, I picked somebody's curiosity about Flat Earth, so gave him the channel, maybe he's watching. Dutch guy. So, who knows? Maybe I just flex math, flex, flat smacked somebody. It's kind of a shout out to somebody that's uh, potentially just found out the truth. Well, I was giving him my arguments. Uh, he was defensive, and a friend of his who was also at the table just didn't like it at all. He dismissed it earlier, the time I brought it on. They happened to be friends, and but he kept on asking questions, and I had, of course, very well-prepared answers, because I'm getting all hyped up before the show, and I was in full energy, so I could just lay it out, and he just looked like he wanted more. So, might have gotten him on the fence, so to speak. Anyway, we'll find out. So, the purple harpoon says the sun, the moon never goes behind the sun. Okay, can you prove that? Can you prove that the moon passes in front of the sun? I don't think you can. I'd be, I'm fine if you do, but I'm, I'm pretty certain that moon goes behind the sun. I said it a couple of years ago in the Sun and Moon group, and I'm saying it again now. Bob and Jaron both think possibly the same thing. They said it on Globebusters last week. Prove that the moon passes in front of the sun. I don't think you can. Okie dokie. So I'm going to do a few shout outs to a few people. So Dotty, Gleam, um, who else have we got? Heath Carmody, uh, Miles Davis, and there was one other. Oh, what about Bob? So all of those people have actually got off their couch, sofa, chair, whatever you want to call it, and uh, attempted to replicate the observation of a narrowing viewing angle, causing things to disappear from bottom up 
due to that limited angle of view. And uh, yeah, I just want to give a props to all of them um, for actually doing it. So yeah, that's uh, that's my shout out. May it continue. It's a very, very simple observation to do. Um, the only couple of details that people need to be aware of is if you do it with a zoom camera or any decent camera with a big aperture, um, you'll have to look a lot further to have this effect happen. So we're trying to replicate what we see at these vast distances, 30 miles plus in some instances, this limit, the angular limit, i.e. the angle to the bottom of anything that you look at in the distance will be limited at a given distance. Now obviously that can be negated to a certain degree with zoom. So to get around that and put it into small scale, you just need a smaller aperture. So the way I did it very easily was with an iPhone. Um, because the lens is near to the bottom of the phone, I can get a very, very limited angle over a reasonably short distance. You know, talking yards, not miles. And uh, several people have gone out and done it. A couple of them did it with feet as opposed to yards. Well, and lucky for them, they didn't actually achieve the result. Um, but, you know, hope they may re-attempt re it. Who knows? Um, but the ones that went out and, you know, did it in, in a few yards as opposed to a few feet certainly replicated the exact result. And this will happen consistently everywhere, always. You know, in the same way as if something gets smaller because it's reduced in angular size at distance, it will disappear. The same principle applies to the bottom of anything. The bottom of something will be a reduced angular size. There's going to be part of everything you look at in the distance that is just too small to see. And that is based purely on the angle that you see it at. As I say, you've also got to take into account the aperture size or the diffraction limit, which is basically how much information you can resolve given the size of aperture or how much you can zoom in on something to keep it really dumbed down. So your eye has obviously got a much smaller aperture than a super zoom camera, therefore you can't resolve as much information. You cannot see as far. Simple. Therefore this effect, the diffraction limit, comes in much quicker and if you have a limited view, a limited angular view to everything in the distance, without question, always, then you will have the bottom of anything you see in that smaller viewing angle, therefore disappearing from bottom up, given enough distance and a small enough angle. So this is, you know, I was confident that people would go out and replicate it every single time. Even if they say they failed, there will be a certain amount of this effect regardless. So thank you very much to, I'll read them off again, Dottie, Gleam, What About Bob, Heath Carmody, and Miles Davis. Thank you very much oh, indeed. Uh, oh, can I, can I quote Rompus? So beautiful, so stupid. <laughs> he says in chat, narrowing viewing angle, causing objects disappearing from bottom up. Ha 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 ha, you utter, utter moron. Okay, denying I... geometry. Well, that's really funny, uh, Rumpus, because it's not geometry. Geometry is a geometrical, mathematical-based 3D world concept. Viewing angles has to do with actual sight observation it's a, a different department things work differently you can demonstrate it to yourself so denying geometry has no, geometry has nothing to do with it can i just add as well that um nathan's been ridiculed for this by a lot of people and questioned by a lot of people and he deserves a little bit more credit because what he's demonstrated and others have now validated and repeated is that objects do get obstructed from the bottom up by virtue of the angle, right? Angle of attack, visibility, who knows what it's called? We know we know what we know what happens. And it's it's only fair that Nathan gets due credit. So for all of you doubters and, and disbelievers and ridiculers and basic trolls, kudos to Nathan for spotting or work, managing to work this out or present the arguments in such a way that everybody now relates to it because everybody's validating the point the objects do get obstructed by virtue of the the viewing angle and second to that it, it, it unfortunately the argument for logic and reason is out the window because logically and reasonably if we live on a flat plane you should see the beach right logically and reasonably but when it comes to real world you can show that the beach is never going to get seen because of the viewing angle and that's a problem because it means that logic and reason cannot be the basis for the our decisions and our beliefs or our views on the shape of the earth. Because as this demonstrates, logically and reasonably, we should see the bottom of objects that are on the floor. And as you can demonstrate, it doesn't actually happen for some reason. What, what, what really goes on? Who knows? But the point is, logic and reason is out the window 
because logically and reasonably on a flat plane, we should see the bottoms of things. When you get low enough to the floor, we don't see the bottoms. So unfortunately, logic and the reason can go out the window like all of the other nonsense that you guys believe in. Hey, Rumpus, just get in here. Chirping maggot. Come on. A chirping maggot? I prefer weasel. Yeah, <clears throat> chirping maggot. Let's do a shout out to um, one of my favorite ball earthers, Sly Sparkane. He's challenged Bob from Globebusters to um, explain how an equatorial mount telescope can track a object in the sky, be in the sun or the moon, on one axis. And he's put up his channel. He said, demonstrate it in a particular way. And it was to do with 3D Max, I think, or animation software or something. I'm not quite sure. I don't really understand the argument, if I'm honest. <laughs> and I'm not really interested <laughs> in trying to work it out because it doesn't really prove anything. But, um, Rumpus doesn't believe in hey, flat Rumpus, floors. Doing? Well, is I, amazing. Hang, on, hang on, just before just before we get Rumpus to ruin my point, um, Bob's accepted his challenge, and on Globebusters tonight, in about four hours' time, we will all be able to witness um, the counter to the claim that the uh, equatorial mount only works on a sphere. So I can't wait for that one, so make sure you watch Globebusters later on, because Sly Sparkane is soon to be no more. And I'm hoping that Wolfie follows him because I've asked Wolfie to double down on it with Sly because I think the claim originated from Wolfie. So hopefully Sly will at least go and then hopefully Wolfie will go with him. Hello, Rumpus. Hello, you're an utter, 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 <laughs> utter, utter, utter moron. All of you. <laughs> it's just incredible how stupid you are. <laughs> I, I, it's just unbelievable. It's like Rumpus. You too, Rumpus. Rumpus, do you accept that objects can be obstructed from the bottom up on a flat plane now? No, of course not. That's unbelievable. You're stupid. an utter, 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 utter imbecile if you say just that. Just draw ridiculous. the geometry of it, you moron. I mean, I can yeah. just... on screen now, just for this idiot. It's literally on screen now. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> this is non-flat surface, you utter, 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 utter moron. Utter, utter, utter. Sorry, how are you going right. to prove it's not flat? It's unbelievable that you what, don't what are you understand about? the floors are not very flat. It's so just every, it seems like Built every example hill? of this that gets put up is accused of having non-flat floors, like builders are going out of their way to produce floors that aren't flat. Oh, they don't try, but the accuracy you're trying to get here is mm. absolutely incredible. Yeah, I the mean, problem, the building the problem just... being that as they reduce the angle, the obstruction comes in before they reach the floor. We also th see things getting more and more squashed again as the angle limits. So not at the floor. We're not talking about obstruction caused by the floor because it happens before the floor is reached. Yeah, because the floor's not flat anymore. No, no, you didn't listen to what I just said. So before reaching the floor, as the angle limits, the obstruction and compression, like in the screen now, although very blurry from Heath Carmody, this is the best we've got. These are other people's observations and not my own. We have the angle reducing and things becoming more compressed as the camera lowers. Prior to... To it reaching the floor so if you want to blame the floor as the obstruction the problem is it happens before they hit the floor there we go someone's drawing a diagram that demonstrates on a flat floor it can't happen they need to demonstrate there it in a diagram sorted. i've done loads that of real world observations demonstrate yeah, how it it listening grumpus you don't need to draw a diagram there's real world that. observations of it on screen demonstrates why you can't the phenomenon you're claiming does not happen on a flat floor. It's it does so happen. simple. I've just yeah, shown you. You know a child could draw this. Sorry, Grumpus. Listen to what I've just said and acknowledge what I've just said. It does happen. I've it's been Anthony demonstrated. Oh, if you talk over me again, bye bye. Excellent. Fine. You're a moron. So you want me to kick you out? Well, no. I, well, I I know you want to sense the reality in this, and I know you don't like me invalidating your position and making you look ridiculous. So I can understand why you want to kick me. That's Sorry. fine. You're You've just a seen a. You've just seen a real-world demonstration. Of a non-flat floor, yeah. Oh, sorry. Did you not... You're going to completely ignore it for the third time. I'll see if I can say it without I you interrupting me. You. Oh, I you won't. So you're going to interrupt this point again. Well, you wanted me to answer, didn't you? No, I haven't said it. Well, no, you can... Okay, you can make the point about... Uh, before Don't need you to give me permission to make my own point. It's my show. Yeah, you made the point. I'm going to answer it. You just have to shut up. <laughs> right, so so you made the point. No, that, that means point shut your mouth. You that means shut your mouth while I make my point. Okay, go ahead. Oh, Nathan. Right. So, 
as demonstrated on screen for the audience as the camera angle reduces and before it reaches the level of the floor we see compression and hey. obstruction that cannot possibly be caused by the floor because the floor has not yet been reached. Wrong. No, not a hand wave dismissal. It was demonstrated to the audience and has been demonstrated by about half a dozen different people so far. Wobbly floors, yes. Wobbly floors, Nathan. They're not flat. Sorry, I'll say it again because Rumpus is literally going to ignore entirely what I've just said. Prior to the floor being reached, the angle becomes more limited and things start to obscure from the bottom up before it is possible for the floor itself to obscure because it has not yet been reached. It doesn't need to get to the bottom. It doesn't need to get on the floor for the wobbly floor to have an influence on what you can see. It's really simple. Oh, really? So the wobbly floor gets in the way even though you're not actually in line of sight with the wobbly floor, Rumpus? You are in sight with the wobbly floor. Oh, really? I've just explained this now. This will be the fourth time I have said it. Before reaching the level of the floor, while still in mid-air and not looking level with the floor wobbly or otherwise, this effect of compression and things disappearing from the bottom up takes place before any possible interference from the floor could be introduced because we have not yet reached the floor. You don't need to reach the floor for the wobbly... Yeah, we do. If you're going to claim that the floor's obstructing it, we damn well better be at that floor level, Rumpus, you complete moron. If you're not at the floor level, it couldn't possibly be the floor obstructing it, could it? You can, if it's close to the bottom of the floor, and the floor or the floor is a gentle curve or anything, a whole series of... Oh, so the floor's now curved, is it? These builders are going out of their way to buy faulty boomerang-shaped bloody spirit levels, right, Rumpus? No. Most floors are just level. Pretty level. If they're not level, people tend to complain or trip over if they've got rooks in them. But I would say Heath Carmody, he's in a pretty regular house. Same as what about Bob? These people are just in regular houses built by regular builders with regular spirit levels. But you want to assert, like you assert about the earth, you'd want to descend it into farce and claim that the bloody floor's bending. What an absolute buffoon. These floors aren't bending, Rumpus. If you want to claim they're bending, fine. Demonstrate it yourself. Don't give us any Have diagrams. You've got a long spirit level, Nathan. Sorry, a Rumpus. Decent size spirit level. Say about two feet long. Have you you got seem one to those? keep ignoring my point about it. I'm Can't about to possibly... make notes. coming up to the point. Right, Have I'd like to acknowledge level? what I've said because I've said it. That this will be the fifth time. So before, you yeah, you're claiming that you shut up. You have to get down shut to up. The level of floor. I'm shut disagreeing with you. Up. <laughs> you're claiming floors shut are up. flat. They're not. Right, I'll give you one last chance. I'll tell you to shut up again. If you don't, Drop goodbye. A spirit level on right, the floor bye bye, asshole. You just want to rumpus my point. Goodbye, on. asshole. Oh, I've said it repeatedly. You just don't want to listen. Before <sighs> the floor could possibly obscure what is in the lens of the camera, this effect took place. It couldn't possibly be a wonky floor causing it because you're not let level with the floor. Hey, Dottie. Oh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Very well. Had to kick an obfuscator. I'm not going to tolerate this crap Welcome anymore, back, claiming buddy. that wonky floors are causing these issues. Hey, Mop Mopoy Law. Hey, Mopoy. Can, can you speak up? I haven't heard you. Hello, Mopoy. Hello. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's way got too him. long. I got him. Okay. Okie dokie then. So yeah, Rumpus really needs to obfuscate this and claim that the floor is causing obstruction. It isn't, because it happens before the floor is reached. Simple. It's worth just noting. Start, just that. start talking, Dottie. Yeah, just talk, just walsh over it. Eventually. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, having me on yesterday, sharing my, my video, and thank you for mirroring it too. I saw that you did that, Nathan. Um, and thank you to everyone in the live chat. You guys are hilarious. Um, but FYI, my name is spelled with the IE, not a Y. But like, keep the comments coming about my name because that shit was cracking me up. So you guys are awesome. So thanks so much for for just taking me in. So cool.
Uh, Glad yeah, to have you on the team. Oh, we're getting trolled. <laughs> what? Where? Oh shit, sorry. I'm in, guys. But, um, I don't know if, um, Unorthodox is on this call, but I did actually make that video that he was, he was talking about yesterday. Travis, are you still there? Of getting smaller, oh, the like, wrong one. so. Sorry, Dottie, for interrupting you. We got trolls. <laughs> oh, you're breaking up, by the way. Oh, I'm on a mobile. It's raining pretty bad here. So, yeah, my service probably isn't that great. I can hear you again. Okay. Anyway, yeah, it's great to have you on the panel. So, uh, Thank you very much. Yeah, I won't be able to stay long today. I'm driving to work right now. But, uh, um, but yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to everybody. Glad I got to catch uh, Nathan yelling at Rump. <laughs> That's honestly the whole thing. Yeah, it's always a classic. Always a good time. Yeah. As long as it doesn't last too long. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Let me just say something, Nathan, with regards to what Rumpus was saying about the um, floor. The lens of the camera that's recording, it never actually gets to the floor because there's always a gap between, even if you were to get the bottom of the lens on the floor, there's always a gap between the the bottom of the lens and the center of the lens where the aperture is, and that's the variable. Now, Rumpus's point is that, well, these obstructions can happen before it gets to the floor. Well, the camera level, the camera lens never actually gets to the floor, so it would have to be a really big, massive obstruction for it to be able to obstruct it, right? Sorry, Rumpus, you can't scale. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I just got to work, but thanks so much again for having me on, and I'll come back when I can um, present another video and hang out for longer. So. Have a good thanks day again for work, joining, Dottie. Dottie. Pleasure to have Bye, you. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye. Shout out to everyone. See you later, Dottie. I mean, dotty. <laughs> My Dutch tongue sticking. So that's really going to be the thing, huh? They're, they're, they're just going to start saying that all these floors are curved. <laughs> yeah, Rumpus believes that all <laughs> building designers and floor layers all apply R. So, so the football fields are curved, the bridges are curved. The, the ground, yeah. everything's Flat. curved. It's the new curve. <laughs> everything is curved. Flat that, is the new is curve. Now. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. These people are so crazy. We're living in 9084. Flat is the new curve. They have to scream obstruction is curved though every single time you show it to them. They have to scream that it's that it's curved, that it's obstruction. They haven't got a choice. Otherwise they just have to run away and let it go. They don't they believe in straight it's lines. Mass hallucination of cur curvature somewhere. I I don't understand it. No, they're basically denying Hello, their fraction. Uh, they just it's don't me. believe that it's what what we say it is. They're not letting it stick and sink in. They just refuse. Even though they can demonstrate it to themselves. Yeah, that's that's the worst part. Everybody can just go out with a camera and do it themselves. And they still don't want to believe it. I'm going to go back down to my local supermarket either tonight or tomorrow because that is an exceptionally uh, flat floor. So I'm going to try and get that again tonight or tomorrow. Oh, there'll definitely be Earth Curve on that supermarket floor. <laughs> no, yeah. God. Yeah, of course there will. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's all our cost. Like, <laughs> cast cement, and you know that it adapts to R because of gravity. It see? doesn't even matter you, it, <laughs> if you call it but flat. But see the logic in that? Like, on their ball, with the gravity uh, to the center of the Earth, yeah, everything that, like, cement settles a level, which is basically R-based. Hey, Anon, how you doing? 
Say hello. hello. R is a natural geometrical on, phenomenon, according to them. Arwin, hold on. Hello, Anon. Hello, how you doing? Good, Tabby. Sorry, Arwin. That's alright. Yeah, but you can call it flat, but flat is level, <laughs> and then according to them, level is curved anyway. So I'm gonna try this test uh, on Monday at my at the office. We have a very, very, very flat, um, shiny floor that goes for a while. Well, I get it now. If you just use simple logic, if flat is uh, level. And according to them, level is curved. That means that flat is curved. So see, it, it works out mathematically. Hello, hello. Hey, flat F, Ginger. <laughs> How you doing? What's up, Ginger? Well, that's not nice. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take that as a, an opportunity to have a short break so with that i'm going to say first and foremost a huge massive enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate and of course a massive thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible if you hated the show then you know exactly what to do probably done it already but if you like the show maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you've not done so already i've been nathan oakley and i'll see you all in the next video Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!